It's Sunday morning, June 14th, 2020. I'm in Northern Pennsylvania this morning and I'm targeting wild brown trout and specifically trout that are feeding on Isonychia. Some of you may know that name as the Slate Drake. Some of you may know it as the Mahogany Dunn. But this large mayfly, not quite as large as the Green Drake, typically comes off from mid-June through early September in Pennsylvania and their hatches are sporadic. I have seen a couple come off this morning. I don't know if I'll get into a hatch today, but I'm hoping I'll find fish that are actively feeding on their nymphs. The trout love these mayflies and trout that have been gorging themselves all spring will still move quickly to a slate drape. So I love fishing the pattern. Now, on a day like today, when we don't have any cloud cover, if we had cloud cover, I'd go straight to a dry fly, and that's it. But with the sun breaking through the forest canopy, it can be tough to know, do you fish the surface? Do you fish subsurface? And this is one of the times when I will fish what in fly fishing we call the dry dropper rig. I'm sure some of you have heard of it, but the rookies, I'm gonna get up close to the camera and give you a quick explanation of the dry dropper rig. So, as its name implies, you are fishing a lead fly, which is going to be a dry fly, and then a fly that's dropped either off the hook bend of the lead fly or the hook eye using a piece of tippet or fishing line that comes down to either a wet fly or a nymph. The reason this is beneficial is because it doubles your chances of catching a fish. You need to remember that trout feed in three zones primarily the surface, the middle water column, and the bottom of the stream. So when you only have nymphs on, or you only have a dry fly on, you're only targeting one of those zones. With the dry dropper, you're targeting two. So when you cast this out, you need to make sure you have a dry fly that is large enough and buoyant enough to support whatever you've dropped off of it. If you've weighted your nymph in any way, either using split shot or lead on the hook, you need to think about that because it will create drag on the dry fly. If the dry fly is too small, it will get pulled under. Won't work. That's very important um, to think about. And when you cast this and this drifts, if you see a pause on your dry fly, you're going to set the hook. That typically means a fish has picked up whatever you've dropped below it. Now in this case, I'm using a sleet drake emerger or a parachute, you can also fish this as a spinner, as my lead fly, and I'm fishing a Jason rubber leg nymph pattern as my dropper. And my hope is that the fish are going to see these and think it's an Isonychia and take it. So I'm pretty excited to fish this today. There are a couple cons to fishing this. One is that you get easily tangled, so it's important to lay your casts out well. And the other problem is that sometimes when you cast this out, it can be easy to get stuck on the bottom, and that's why I don't typically put any more than a 12 inch dropper on. In fact, sometimes it's better to stay under 10 inches with a dropper because it just moves through the stream easier. Uh, you definitely don't want to get hung up. But this can be very effective at times. I do like fishing it occasionally. We're gonna start out with this today. If I see the fish up on the lead fly a lot, I'm probably just going to cut off the dropper and go straight to that. But 
Let me show you a close-up of these patterns real quick, and then we're gonna head upstream and get started. Guys, I thought this was a brown trout, and then when he took it the second time, I realized it was a very large wild brook trout. Really nice fish. Lots of girth for a wild fish, incredible.
a pretty nice wild brown trout there. fish gave me a second chance. The late afternoon sun is dipping over this mountain to my left and this drainage is starting to get a little dark, too dark for filming. So I think I'm going to start my hike out of here. I had a wonderful day fishing the Isonikia Emerger. I did catch a few early on the dry dropper rig but found that I didn't need it because all the fish were coming up and taking the dry fly or the emerger and it was just awesome to watch some explosive takes caught some beautiful brown trout was really surprised by the brook trout being here and the size of some of them that was a, a nice added bonus but slate drakes in june i honestly might enjoy that more than green drakes because they're available for a longer period of time and the fish just love them so, good times. I uh, wanted to give you guys a quick update on the eye wader testing. So, I've worn these a couple times now on multi-mile hikes into streams. And so far, very comfortable. The durability has been good so far. I, I really like the knee reinforcement. I've said that before. 
one opportunity for improvement, Kenny, is the breathability could be improved because when I'm hiking in such long distances, I've noticed that the moisture is retained inside the wader to the point that at the end of the day, you know, it's just, you can feel the moisture in there and I have to turn them inside out to let them dry out. And they do dry out overnight, but it's pretty noticeable. Uh, so I think if that's an option, I would improve the breathability. They haven't leaked so far. And like I said, they're comfortable. So I'll keep testing them and giving you guys feedback as time goes on. But thanks for watching this episode of Wooly Bug. And I'll catch up with you next time. See ya.